Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for tuning in. If this is your first time on my channel, my name is Perla. In an emergency, you have millions of people trying to get a hold of each other at once and of course it's bound to happen that the lines get jammed and the cell phone lines are out and how are you going to get a hold of your family then so for communication there are a couple of options that you can keep in mind um, to prepare your family for that circumstance if you were not able to get a hold of each other or if, if the power was out or the cell towers were down what would you do? Now, of course, our primary way of getting a hold of someone is our cell phone. And hey, I'm not gonna knock it. Sometimes our cell phones will be working. If you have a cell phone, my other suggestion would just be to text your family that you are all right. You know, send, send a text to all of your family at once. So even if you just get that one message out, hopefully they all get it at once and try to do this as soon as the emergency happens because as soon as it happens, people are gonna get on the phone and that's when the lines are probably gonna jam up. So if you can be one of the first ones to send out that mass text to your family saying, you know, meet up checkpoint one, I'm safe, and your name. Hella blank, hella simple, I'm safe, meet up here, and that's it. Everybody knows where you're going. Everybody knows where everyone's gonna be and you already have those things in place. You can also use the internet, you know? The internet is another great way to do that um, and communicate with your family. Just send out, you know, put up a post that says, I'm, I'm safe, you know, and, and, and just post it so that people can see on the internet that you're all right. And if for some reason, you know, you weren't able to get a hold of your family, you know, at least you got a message out there, you know, write it up on your wall. I'm safe. Check yourself safe on the internet. That is a great way to let your family know that you're all right. And of course, if, if the power was still working enough for you to actually get that message out, then that's another thing to consider. Another way of getting a hold of your family is two-way radios. It is very simple and even if the phone lines are down, radio frequencies are more likely to work than cell phones in an emergency. Now, even if cell phone towers are down, you can still get out a radio signal to someone. So I would suggest for your family to invest in some good two-way radios that will allow you to communicate within you know, the distances that your families are gonna be scattered in. I actually have the Motorola T465 radios for all of my family. We have one of those in every one of our bug out bags and even in our earthquake kits because it is very important for us to be able to get a hold of each other. And we do know that most likely our phones may not be working. So we wanted to have another way of communicating and this is the one we selected. So there are other ways of course of doing it. Now another option is a ham radio. A lot of people don't know about these because Usually you gotta be a little bit more savvy, you know, in regards to technology to know about ham radios, but I know a lot of preppers use them. Um, ham radios, you do have to have a license for, and that's that's next on my plan is to get, you know, my ham radio license. Now, normally it is illegal for you to send out messages on a ham radio without having a ham radio license. However, in an emergency, it is acceptable and it is allowed for a person to send out a message um, in an emergency even if you don't have a license now getting a radio license that's that's a whole <laughs> that's a whole nother video topic and we can also go over that as well I'm actually researching how to get my radio license right now so I do have access and I did buy about four ham radios that um, are in our earthquake kits so that just in case all else fails those are there for us to communicate and now like, like i said this is part of our contingency communication plan and this would only be used if all else fails another item that you can use are satellite radios but those are freaking expensive <laughs> i looked into those guys and they are freaking expensive so i opted out for the ham radio instead um even though the satellite i mean that is like goals right there <laughs> satellite phones that is like hashtag goals right there because i would love to have one but they're actually quite expensive 
Um, and even the, the time on them are expensive. And I, I was just looking into them. So I went with what I could afford and I went with what seemed more, most reasonable for our family to have. I'm not going to sit there and spend hundreds or thousands of dollars, you know, on satellite phones, on talk time, you know, with satellite phones and those sort of things when there are other ways of getting a hold of each other. And I'm going to opt out for those ways before I go and spend my money on something that is you know, even though it is most likely to work, <laughs> no matter the emergency, I mean, if there wasn't an EMP or something, <laughs> you know, um, most satellites phones should work. However, it is not, um, it is not budget conscious. Now for all of us who are budget conscious when we're prepping that, that's not a, a, an actual option for a lot of us. So the ham radio can be a, a great alternative to a satellite radio for your contingency and communications plan. Now, I did just give you quite a few ways of being able to communicate with your family. Um, and of course, you're going to pick out what your primary, your alternate, your you know contingency and your emergency plan is going to be for your communication. Now, we all tend to think, you know, about fa fancy gadgets and, you know, satellite phones and, you know, ham radios and all of those things. But if all else fails and nothing else is working, I would resort to good old pen and paper. Like, <laughs> I'm not even playing with you guys right now. What, I mean, I, I feel like people don't even think that this is like an option to communicate anymore. But the truth is, is that leaving a handwritten message with a Sharpie on a wall or, you know, on a big piece of paper or on a piece of cloth or on a window even, that's not broken. <laughs> Um, it's a great way to communicate with your family and I know that you know the message is not gonna you know telepathically get to them <laughs> I don't have witchy powers like that but <laughs> if it were to happen that your family came to your home looking for you and you weren't there at least you left them a message written on the wall saying hey guys I left a checkpoint too I left, I left to check point three. Like though these are the things that are important to know. Now, when you leave a message for your family, you know, in a written note, you kind of, they would want to know when was the last time you were there. So you can also know a, approximately how far you could have gotten in between the time you left and in the time they found the note. So if I were to leave a handwritten note on a wall for my family to communicate if all else fails, and they were to show up here at my house looking for me, because this is one of our checkpoint locations, um, I would definitely leave, you know, a note on a big wall where they it's where it's visible, where they can see it, and I would put the date, the time I wrote the note and also where I'm heading to and just saying, hey, I'm safe. I'm going to check point one, two, or three. You know, so these are things that they may want to know in order for them to know how far you may have gotten or where you're headed to. And some of the times our families may not know that some locations are inaccessible. So that's another, you know, thing to put up there too. Checkpoint one, you know, is compromised. Go to checkpoint two. Those are things that are good to leave for information for your family in case they were to show up at that checkpoint and you were no longer there. You can't wait around for your family forever. So it's also important to know how long a person will be waiting there if it's safe to do so. And if it's not, expect a person to move on to the next checkpoint and you know, leaving a note stating what time you left is very important so that they know how far you may have gotten. And in between that, the route that you would have taken to get to your, to your next checkpoint is very important because you can estimate or just follow the trail to your family and hopefully you would run into each other at a checkpoint or on the way there. So like I said, do not write off <laughs> the good old pen and paper because leaving a note like that is one of the best ways to communicate because if in an emergency your location as mine is one of our checkpoint locations and i'm no longer here because i had to leave i had to evacuate and i had to bug out i'm gonna leave a note on that wall telling my family 
had to bug out, left at 445. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I'm going to checkpoint one. And if that doesn't work, then I'm going to go to checkpoint two. And these are the things that we all need to start considering. Now, unfortunately, we do have to consider these circumstances. Our phones most likely won't be working. So how are you gonna communicate with your family? What is your alternative? And then what is your contingency? And of course, what in an emergency, if all else fails, how will you communicate? So I hope that this video gave you some good tips about how to create a communication plan for your family. And if you liked the tips in the video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And also, of course, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're into prepping videos so that you can know when there's a new video posted. And if there's also a tip that you may have for me that I may not have mentioned and I may not have considered, please leave it down in the comments because I want to make sure that I have a great communication plan for my family as well. So thanks so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next video.